Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you can hear me, first of all. It's been a while since uh, I've had a, a webinar here with you. So glad that you could join us now on the 13th of May. I had a very nice uh, uh, holiday, in fact, or honeymoon, better said, slash wedding. It, it was actually everything in one. So uh, that was very nice. Left on Sunday, came back yesterday late. And uh, I took a look at the markets this morning. It's quite interesting to see the, the charts after um, you know, maybe eight days of not looking at it. Seems a bit uh, strange again, even though it was quite brief. But uh, not then again, not much really happened. If you look at the four-hour charts, you know, just a, a bit of up down. Really, not that much of a, of a big deal in a way, but uh, still interesting to look at it. Uh, we uh, before we take a look at the charts and uh, my view of things yeah, is going to be uh, maybe uh, a bit. Uh, Discovery in a sort of kind of discovery fashion because uh, I've also haven't looked at it that much as I said so we can explore it together. Before we do that though, this uh, PowerPoint explaining first of all the risk disclaimers and disclaimers that this material is intended for a global audience. Take into consideration that the info may not be suitable for everyone. To get the corresponding info on charting conditions and other details, take a look at mrmarketsglobal.com. Select your country of residence and contact an appropriate entity. And then the risk disclaimer explaining that traded for exchange and global financial markets is considered high risk and may not be suitable for all investors. Please seek the advice of an independent financial advisor for more information on that. And this webinar is for educational purposes only. Please uh, realize that when you continue watching this webinar, you agree with the disclaimer and the content mentioned here. As always, we have this slide explaining what we're looking for before entering. And then, of course, after entering, there's the management up to exit. Both are very important, and prior to entering, we need to make sure that we're implementing our trading plan as we want to, and as stipulated uh, by ourselves. Today, we'll be focusing on moving averages. Okay, with that said, let me head over here and take a look at the calendar with you together. We have some lighter euro news, and we have USD core retail sales in the New York session. Otherwise, we have our webinars. Let's take a look together here what we have this week. 25th of May, we have candlestick pattern recognizer. That's 12 days from now, next week, Sunday, basically. We have, let's see, tonight a weekly Forex recap, apparently. We have tomorrow. Forex strategy, that's a new type of webinar. And Thursday, Fibonacci. And let's see, Thursday we have the special webinar with Nanet and myself. Okay, so make sure to sign up for one of one of for one of these or all of these maybe even. And with that said, now let's head over to the Euro dollar first of all. Thank you, uh Mashtio, for for that. It was it was a beautiful day, so it was nice and Sunny, beautiful weather, everything was, was perfect, so couldn't be better, couldn't wish for more, in fact, so that was really great. And uh, it was actually in Italy, so it was uh, a beautiful environment as well. And uh, let's take a look at this euro dollar one hour chart. Let's see, I missed, apparently, when I was gone last week, some upside, but also a big downside after that. I can see. Uh, I left the 4th of May, which means 5th of May is something that I didn't see anymore. We can see some consolidation upside, a bull flag up, and a respect for 140. 139.94 was the turning spot for a very big 250 pip drop. That was uh, quite something happened. Seemingly, looks like it happened during the ECB press conference, maybe, or something like that on Thursday. Some euro. Interest rate decision was then, I think, if I remember correctly, and uh, was it quite a dramatic fall? It looks a bit funny how it fell so impulsively, 250 pips. After slow but sure upside, you can see that the upside trend was strong, but you know sometimes these currencies can fall a lot. Um, very impulsive, and if we fib the last leg of that impulsive move then uh, it would seem 
very natural for one more fall, at least to get some divergence between these, uh, these bottoms. We don't have that at the moment. We have a very big AO to the downside. We don't have any divergence between the hour bottoms here. So a, a break of the bottom to get that divergence wouldn't surprise me. Um, before we get that break, though, we are having a pretty big consolidation if you look at the 50-minute chart at least. That looks a bit, maybe a bit messy because of the, uh, there, that looks a bit better. You can see yesterday was quite flat. So that uh, is, is a pretty big zone already if you look at the 30-minute, maybe the hourly is enough. And just to win to the hourly here, you see it's pretty, uh, pretty flat since Friday late. So we have to see how long this consolidation zone can last. Give me one second when I open my uh, my drawing tool here. Yeah. So got the drawing tool here. So this could last maybe another half a day. I mean, it's, it'll be difficult to tell when this could break. If it does go up and retrace down up to the 38.2 fib around 137.80. Uh, that would seem like an, an interesting shorting zone for a potential uh, top of a bull flag, sorry, excuse me, bear flag pattern. That could be a resistance for a fall uh, down to maybe minus 272 targeted 137.20, for instance. So something like that, the here are 60 pips, is, uh, is an interesting zone, an interesting area that I think we can capitalize on to the downside. Will it happen within the next hour? I don't think so. We would first have to make some upside and then uh, respect that level. It's, it's, we have to see how long it could take. It could be in New York maybe that that could happen. Um, let's take a look at the CAM MACD to see if that gives some confluence. <clears throat> we have an H5 at the 38.2 fit and R2. So the stop loss would have to be above the R3. I think if we go with the stop loss above the 61.8, about 138.10, when shorting it around 137.80 for about 30 pips, 25 pips, that that should be that should be uh, you know safe enough for to catch a downside at that level. I don't think we would need more. That's above the 50 pip, above the R3, and above the 61.8. So there's a lot of resistance layers in between the 38.2 fib entry and the stop loss placement. Normally, technically, the swing high, swing low is, is used with fibs, but in this case, if we add some confluence like the Camarilla to it, um, plus the 61.8 is, is a strong level too, then that should be a, a safe enough stop loss, in my opinion, uh, at least for today. Then we'll have to see how far it falls today and if we get some more continuation tomorrow. Uh, if it does fall a bit today, let's say price moves up to the 38.2 fib, respects that level and falls throughout the day, that makes it kind of like a sideways zone. Throughout the Asian session, we can easily move that short to break even, move the stop loss from 138.10 down to break even and see if we get the follow through tomorrow, something like that. Um, and there's nothing wrong with moving it to break, even in that case, because tomorrow, if we don't get a continuation, we don't want to get stuck in tomorrow's upside, potentially. You never know. You want to be aware of all scenarios. So if something like this were to happen, great. If it doesn't happen and we get the alternative up, down, up, down, and then up instead of down, then we have a break-even trade. Uh, if the price exceeds the 38.2 fib, then I think that you know our stop loss should be safe enough for at least price to get some downside before taking us out. You might want to then, in that consider, in that case, in that scenario, if it does exceed the 38.2 fib by a lot, there's always the option of taking it off for break even when it makes a retracement. All right. So if it exceeds the 38.2 fib to the 50 or 61.8, that makes a dip then uh, you know you might want to consider taking it off just in case it, uh, it makes a higher correction. I don't think that will happen, but that would be the backup scenario. 
if it doesn't get to 38.2 fib, uh, then we'll probably just see price respecting the H4, for instance, in these tops like this, and uh, we could see downside from there. That would be a bit early. I mean, I would like to see it retrace higher, but it doesn't have to get to that level. It doesn't have to get that high. Then the alternative would be to trade some breakout here below, which seemingly doesn't seem to have a lot of space. If you look at L4 and L5, they're quite tight next to each other. That's probably because yesterday was a very s small day, not much movement, and then those levels are pretty close to each other. That wouldn't give too many options, probably. But that would be the, uh, the, the idea, though. If we don't retrace up to the 38.2 fib, then there, you know, there wouldn't be a, a retracement trade, but there could be still breakout trades to the downside in this region. The only thing is that the space is tight. I think those are basically all the scenarios that I can imagine of that we've discussed. The alternative would be a real impulsive move up that takes out the stop loss. That would be a loss, obviously, if that happens. doesn't seem so likely, but you never know. Uh, if it really starts to move up a lot, you might want to be careful. You might want to keep an eye on the five-minute world. I just wait for the five-minute world to ride out. Let it uh, not make a higher high for 30 minutes. Wherever it stops, wherever it goes to, let it just make its move. Let it consolidate for 30 minutes. And then probably this upside is over. I'm thinking if there's any other scenario that in mind. I don't think so, really. Ideally, of course, price goes to the 38.2 fib, stops there, turns around, and falls throughout today and tomorrow. And 137.20 could be the bouncing spot. What happens, basically, if that were to happen? What is the bigger picture? Let's take a look. Four hour is a very big fall. You can see that this is going back to the zero, slowly starting on its move back to the zero line, which typically usually sees a, a kind of like a second bump here before it totally goes back to the zero line. That second bump is probably the divergence on the smaller time frame, something like this. So it seems likely the scenario that I already discussed prior to it. Something like that. Let's see. Daily chart. Let me get rid of this fib. Two big days on uh, Thursday, Friday. Yesterday, just a very small doji. Hardly any body to that candle. I mean, it was, it was only 25 pips, so nothing happened yesterday. Definitely this upside momentum, and when we hit 140, you can see why there's also this resistance line. The question is if we broke this rising wedge. Looks like we did. However, from a bigger perspective, we can easily see still that price is in that uptrend channel. So that rising wedge is a bit early. Moving averages here are pointed down because of these two bearish days. The blue moving average and the green, they're still up. And we're still in an uptrend channel. So I would still be cautious of the fact that when we get close to this 136.70, 136.50 level, that that could be still, uh, sorry, that could that still be support right there. So we could see some downside to, the, to that support level, horizontal support and trend line support, but that could then still be a bouncing spot, and we could still maybe see an upside continuation. If not upside continuation, maybe upside for retracement from more downside. Either of the two, um, the, let's say the most logical path at that point would be a bit up because of the, um, the fact, or well, the, the, the reasons that I already mentioned. If we do break through, 136.50 here, 136.70. 
then we can maybe see a bigger space to 135, 13450, 134 there to the downside. Otherwise, I would say there is some downside potential um, from here to that 137, 13670. Sorry, I'm getting these numbers mixed up. But then some upside would be possible. So something like that. Due to the momentum, we could still expect some downside. Then with the divergence in play, plus the bigger upsides, swings, upside story here on the higher time frame, some upside seems likely. Then we'll have to see if what happens at this resistance levels. And if price does break below blue, then we could expect some downside. Definitely. Big wick, bearish close. So in that regard, a break of last week's low, which hasn't happened yet, seems likely, but it doesn't have to be uh, from here. It could first go up this week to the 38.2 fib, move down, break last week's low, then move up again, all within this week. And the candle could be something like, A bit of a bit of a wick at the bottom and a bit of a wick at the top, for instance. You know, the, so that could easily happen. But yeah, doesn't really matter. It it does have bearish pressure last week's weekly candle. Therefore, a break of last week's low does seem likely. It would be difficult difficult to imagine it doesn't break break last week's low. So it's something that supports this one hour analysis that we were doing previously, where we said this is a very big AO reading. We're going back to the zero line, and a break of this bottom which is last week's low, seems likely. Uh, and we've already reached the zero line here, which means the retracement could be complete sometimes now or sometime soon. OK, so I think that's about it for the euro dollar. Uh, Sylvia, thanks. Thank you. Good to hear that. And um, let me know if, if you have any questions regarding euro dollar, if you, if you came late. I think. You probably heard everything in the meantime, but it's good to see the price again. <laughs> Looks a bit funny to me after uh, looking at uh, sea, <laughs> sea water for a week. Although there are a lot of waves in the sea as well, so I was practicing waves, wave techniques, as you can imagine. So that gave some inspiration. This is the pound dollar. One hour chart, not as dramatic as the euro dollar, definitely not. Actually, it looked a lot like a bull flag, but broke to the downside, those things can happen. Euro pound probably moved down a lot. So I look at the difference between the euro dollar and pound dollar. Um, <clears throat> well, let me take one more look at this euro dollar here. Let's see. I, I, first, let me start with the bigger picture because the hourly doesn't really provide me much um, clarity. We can see that the AO is strong too, though. That's true. And we've gone to the zero line in the meantime. So here, too, the same story would be, or the same analysis would be present that the break of this bottom could happen because of the, uh, to get the divergence between the bottoms. So that could happen. Get the divergence here. True, but let me start with the bigger picture because I want to get a bit more grasp what happened uh, in the long run here since last week. Here too, bearish candle, big wick at the top, bearish close. Does look like a strong pin bar. Price went up to 170 exactly, 169.98. Obviously, 170 big psychological number. 170.40 was a big top here, or is a big top, right there. 
Dive was a big resistance level. Price action pretty uh, pretty bearish as well here last week. Yep, that looks like uh, the pound dollar would also be making a bigger uh, retracement slash reversal. Uh, definitely uptrend just like the euro dollar, even a str stronger uptrend than the euro dollar, definitely still intact, but um, price, looking at price action on the weekly, definitely a big fall. Okay, so in this case, a break of the uh, daily green uh, moving averages, we could see a bigger correction, for instance, down to 165, right here. Between these moving averages, we got the, uh, the green moving averages still pointed up. But if we break those, we can see a, a downside correction down to uh, the support, for instance, like that. If we break that, maybe even further down to 160, for instance. That's the potential, I would say, on the pound dollar. We do have divergence between these uh, tops. I would say already maybe double or triple divergence in the meantime. That would lend itself to potentially a bigger correction eventually. But we need to, uh, confirmation would be a break of these moving averages. Confirmation would be basically a move below these support levels right there. Until then, oh. now let's take a look at the hourly from a different perspective. Also, pretty uh, pretty big correction so far already. This looks like already that this looks like a correction in itself, and this could be already slowly building on um, a break to the downside. Let's take a look at the Cam MACD. H4 and R1, 168.98. Well, it looks like uh, that any upside will be facing resistance. Um, I mean, looking at the longer time frames, obviously we see a lot of upside trends. But if you look at price action on the weekly, that's a big candle. If it retraces it about halfway, we should already actually, you know, retrace a bit of that candle already, in fact. Yes, there was a small bullish day. Mm -mm 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 four-hour chart. Same like the, I would still say it's relatively same like the euro dollar. The fall wasn't, wasn't as dramatic as the euro dollar, but I would say any move up to these levels, these, these blue levels, would be a potential resistance. 169, 169.20, 169, or let's say 169.25, 169.50. Those could all be resistances to get some kind of uh, inverse, no, no, sorry, head and shoulders here uh, on this pound dollar as well. Not that it has to fly down all the way to 140 necessarily, but with this, this multiple confluence of divergence, uh, a break of orange support would uh, be the confirmation of that bigger correction. In the meantime, as long as we don't break orange, any upside would be you know, a decent chance of a correction to find resistance, to find more momentum to the downside. 
So despite the uptrend, I would say up looking like a retracement for more down. And um, although we have 169.25, 169.50 as resistances, we might not get there. It could really be 169 that, that is the turning spot. We'll have to see what happens today, at least today. Not sure about tomorrow. Depends how today's price action will be. Um, but today, 169, I would expect as a resistance. Now, it depends. If price were to move up there, but make a small downside, and then hang around at that level, then tomorrow we could see price then still continue to higher resistances. All right? But today, I wouldn't expect a break, much of a break of this 169. If we move up there, hit that level, then fall down a lot, then make a bear flag throughout the Asian session, just like the euro dollar, then there's probably a high likelihood of follow through tomorrow to the downside. So today, 169 seems like a resistance. Will it be a resistance tomorrow? We never know. That's something that will depend on today's price action as well. It's something we can reanalyze tomorrow, obviously. So that's what I would be looking for. A stop loss, I would say below, above, excuse me, um, uh, above this 169.20. I mean, if you really want to go safe, technically it would be above this 169.38. But uh, I wouldn't expect price to go above 169.25, so 169.30 probably would be enough. Let's take a look at CAMD again. You see there's an H5 and an R2 at 169.30. So any stop loss above there would be um, way above these resistances as well. Now, what happens if it doesn't get up to 169, though? <clears throat> then, obviously, the only thing that is left to, just like the euro dollar, is the breakout to the downside. There's a bit more space, but not a lot of space, just like the euro dollar. Below this trend line here at L4, below 168.36. Right there, right below this trend line, so space for the breakout to the downside. Well, that's the pound dollar I would say for the moment. Um, any anything you want to add, maybe? I was trading last week. <clears throat> Looks like a big, big move up here on which was it May May six, Tuesday. Tuesday European session. Anyone get this move here? This is 140 pips. After that, only correction I can see. That was not so easy to trade. This fall was uh, not bad, maybe. Anything uh, you want to add maybe to the euro dollar, pound dollar that I missed? <clears throat> because I'm just looking at it for the second time today. So, Everyone is quiet. <clears throat> okay, <laughs> that's not a good sign, maybe. But your uh, dollar, yeah, it's maybe it wasn't maybe an easy easy week. I can see some upside, but you just have to catch that, of course. Otherwise, especially Thursday, I guess a big uh, downside here on the euro dollar. Friday too.
Alrighty, well, no comments, so let's continue. I hope that you had a good week at least. I'll use the, um, hmm, there are a lot of lines here. Let me take those off. One second. Break of this trend line finally. That took, a, took long. Just dip below this support level here. One or two pips. One to 92 exactly, in fact. Well, we can easily put this channel on. So we'll have to see if this can continue in the uptrend or if this is a, a hook back for more weakness to the downside. The blue trend channel would uh, would give it a, an idea of that. Also this horizontal level right here, but 92 of course. If we break 92 plus this channel, then we can see more fall, a more downside correction. Uh, who knows how far? It could be it could be pretty far. Maybe we'll see a lot of dollar strength. Uh, we're definitely seeing some clues on your dollar and pound dollar that that could happen. Uh, this uh, Audio is the isn't so far as yet. Let's take a look at the hourly. It had some weakness here, but this could still be a correction for the upside as we get back to support. So now be careful with that. How does the weekly cut chart look like? One second. Last week was a bullish candle. That's totally different than the euro dollar pound dollar. Which means that we could have a retracement of last week's weekly candle effect before uh, moving up. So we'd have to really break last week's low for more of a confirmed downside, even maybe 92, the low of two weeks ago. Other than that, this still looks uh, more uh, bullish effect. If you look at this channel, um, price. I mean, sorry, this AO as well, very strong, very high momentum here. The AO is back to the zero line. Plus, we broke the last resistance on the daily chart, which was these tops right in here. This looks like a retracement from our upside to me. So we can put a fib on this upside here. Dive into the four-hour chart and any of these fibs, probably the 50 or 61.8, could be a big bouncing spot, maybe even the 38.2 for more upside. Now, if we break that fib, if we break out of this, we break 92, then things are looking differently. Last week's low, one second, was 92.52. 92.52. Is here, okay. Yeah, so any of these 538.250 or 61.8 seem the most likely turning spot at the moment. Close to the S2 and L5. Definitely some downside momentum today. Um, we'll have to see how far it can ride out. Doesn't seem to be a lot of space left, so that trade to the downside doesn't make much sense, I think, considering the fact that uh, 9320 is a 38.2, which is really very close by. I don't think it, 14 pips to the downside doesn't make much sense before we already bump into this support level. Here, here, and here which could be a bouncing spot for uh, for some upside, maybe even a lot of upside. So, Or maybe it's just um, a small bounce before we trace deeper and then make a bigger upside. That's something that remains to be seen. All of these FIBs are support levels. For the moment, from an intraday perspective, the 38.2 FIB is already a pretty uh, logical spot for upside. That doesn't really uh, match the euro and Pounds, so maybe the euro odd, for instance, and pound odd. Let's take a look.
ultimately 38.2 providing the resistance here. Your odd also moving down just like the euro pound. Yeah, 150 providing a, this 150 level plus 38.2 providing a lot of resistance, but we are back at the the bottom here. Uh, price broke to support, but we're still at this horizontal support. From that perspective, price could easily use that level to maybe go higher again to retrace to the 50 or 61.8. From an intraday perspective, we've crack through all those levels. It doesn't seem to be that interesting to me. Ah, sorry, Nicola. Yeah, that's because their moving averages are always on the uh, the chart. So, and I'm just back after um, vacation. So, I'm just analyzing price momentum. Momentum is anyhow more like moving averages. Um, but these things that you see on this chart is our moving averages. There are four of them. And uh, but the people who are mostly in here are are more regular viewers. So, I don't discuss what they are or what levels they are because um, it's known for most of you. But uh, if you're new, then that could be confusing indeed. Um, when I showed like spaces between the moving averages, there are actually spaces between those moving averages. For instance, when I was showing the euro dollar, no, when I was showing the, the pound USD, for instance, here the four hours chart, there's actually space between moving averages. So when I say support, that's a support moving average. And when that level breaks, there's a high likelihood of price going to the next moving average. That's how we, we use them, for instance, as a resistance, sorry, a reversal slash retracement tool. The other method would be if, of course, price is moving away from moving averages. We had an uptrend. That would be a trending scenario, not a reversal scenario. Here, of course, we see four moving averages on our chart. And price is above them, for instance, pulling the moving averages to the upside and prices above all of them. They're all in sequence, they're all lined up, they're all pointed to the upside. In that case, we're talking about a trending scenario. Uh, if price is going back towards them, if price is moving back or filling the gap between them, these are reversals and retracements, and this is uh, how we identify the trend, how you can see what kind of uh, trade there could be possible using these moving averages. If there's divergence between certain tops, uh, or bottoms, then most likely there is a bigger chance for price not only to move back to the short-term moving averages, but eventually to move back even to the intermediate or the long-term moving average. That's why when I look at the GU daily, we have plenty of divergence between these tops. And I was referring to the fact that we can go back to the blue and the green. And the, the blue and the green are moving averages. Uh, because of that divergence, a likely move would be a retracement between these moving averages. And not always do we get there, but the goal is the blue one. Sometimes we fall a bit short. This is not the best example. It's not perfect. But most of the time it works pretty neat how price does go back to the intermediate or the long term with divergence. Uh, that would be the reversal scenario. Obviously, if price then moves back to the short-term moving averages, it's a bouncing spot. It's a, you know, it's, a, it's a support level. Those moving averages in a trend can be used as support and resistance, like it, like it is here. Now, this piece was maybe a bit choppy, but it did. Every time it went back to the moving averages, it was used as support. So this is how we would analyze using moving averages and um, uh, you know, analyze the trend, analyze if there's any opportunities, analyze if there's any maybe even filters or um, opportunities to trade. All right. So indeed today is the moving averages, although we always, despite the fact that we use 
more emphasis on moving averages throughout today's webinar. Uh, we always use other things like, for instance, higher highs, higher lows, classical definition of a trend, uh, trend lines, horizontal levels, momentum and corrections, uh, price action and candlestick patterns and chart patterns to add to that main focus of today. All right, so I'll try to keep it in mind to, to mention a bit more on moving averages. So I hope that helped a bit at least. Let's uh, continue with the odd USD. So if you look at the moving averages here, uh, you can see on the hourly price has already crossed below the momentum moving averages. I call these the momentum because they switch with price, they interact with price a lot more. And you can see that these are already bearishly aligned, but that the intermediate and long-term moving averages are bullish still which means that we're making a retracement with an uptrend, if you look at the hourly at least. Does that make sense, Nicole? I hope that helps a bit. Okay. Good. Well, we'll move along, and, and you'll get the hang of it as we go along. Um, it's, it's difficult to explain everything in, in a couple of minutes, but uh, I'll try to keep focus on uh, the moving averages. So you can see on this uh, four-hour that uh, this is still an uptrend, too, just like the hourly. We have the channel, but we also have the moving averages, of course, green and blue, basically that means uptrend because uh, I have moving averages that change color uh, accordingly, so that means that if price is above the moving averages, we would have a bullishly color, which is green or blue, and if price is below it, we would have a red or, or dark red color, which would be bearish. So when we see blue or green, that means everything is bullishly aligned at the moment. On the four-hour chart, you can see price is above the moving averages, but price action, as we can see, is heading back to the moving averages, which means that retracement is going on. And the bouncing spots could be the long-term moving average, for instance, at the 55th, there's a confluence. Uh, the bottom of this uptrend channel, plus 61.8, there's another confluence. Let's take a look at the daily. Daily, everything is uh, bullish too. You can see, green, blue, green. This downside here was a retracement because price went back to the moving average and where did we bounce? Roughly at the lighter green one, which is the intermediate, and we use that as a bouncing spot and we're now hooking back. Okay, in this case, uh, this could be a double hook back. We see that more often when price moves back to the moving averages, then bounces off the moving average. Sometimes it doesn't bounce with the, it does bounce with some momentum, but not enough to keep on going forever, and we see uh, kind of like a hook back for more upside. Something like this, for instance, price moves back to the moving average, bounces off it, hooks back to it, and then continues. That's something that I'm expecting. If we break this swing high, swing low, this this bottom here at 92, then uh, that would be uh, invalidated in my opinion. All right, the analysis would be uh, invalidated. Fifty-minute chart, you can see, looks a bit different because we have the momentum moving averages very strongly pointed to the downside. We have the intermediate down. We have prices even below the long-term down. So, fifteen obviously is a faster chart. It reacts faster to price action. Um, therefore, this downside on the hourly, this retracement on the hourly, is looking more bearishly on the fifteen. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see, therefore, price maybe hook back but still finding some more downside because there's a lot of momentum to the downside here. To the downside, sorry, there's a lot of moment, bearish momentum on the, on the USD at the moment. And if price looks back to that resistance about here, we can see some resistance, horizontal resistance. Could be a spot where we see a bit more downside uh, down to those moving averages lower below at the, and the FIBs as well, of course. We take a look at the daily chart here. Yeah, 
So let's take a look at the euro odd now and pound odd from the moving average perspective. You can see the hourly prices we're tracing back to the moving averages here. It's a bit of a mixture. Let me put on a different template one second. This template has more moving averages, gives a bit of a different view. And this one shows that the moving averages are quite intertwined. So look at the four hour here. You can see it's pretty mess messy in a way because all these moving averages are on each other, they are uh, on top of each other with little angle, they're flat. And when moving averages are flat like this, there's not much of a trend going on. Um, there's not even a reversal going on. This is more like a ranging environment, which is uh, not the best environment to, to trade with using moving averages at least. So this is something I would skip because of this. If I look at the four hour chart, this is not interesting to me. Let's take a look at the same view. Euro odd looks a bit different. Euro is more bearish. Pound odd is more imbalanced. Euro odd is looking more bearishness. Price is heading back to the moving averages. Let's see if there's a trade that is of interest. see moving averages around 148 confluence here well, 148 we see a lot of moving averages come in that could be a resistance spot here for this uh, euro odd yeah if we look at the four hour chart you can see if price does get back there and then bounce off of those moving averages, then we have everything aligned. We got the long term, the intermediate, the short term moving average all below each other, very much in a trending mode. And if price then closes below this short term band, as we call it, then uh, that would be the breakout scenario to the downside. Okay, at the moment though, we're not at 148. Um, so we have to either wait for price to get up to 148. That could be an interesting level to either try to hunt for a short or wait for the price to hit 148 and bounce below this band here for taking shorts. In the meantime, though, price is uh, still has maybe some decent space to that 148 level, so there could be some retracement trade up to 148. So even if, for instance, price were to dip down here, find support at these moving averages, that could be a support level for an upside to 148. That's how you can basically find retracement trades. Now this one of course is more, in my opinion, more risky. From resistance is less riskier, although every trade has its risk obviously. But So this is how you can kind of piece together um, the moving averages to see where there could be interesting zones that are worth trading. Or maybe it's not worth trading at all. If the moving averages are flat, I don't like trading it. Um, because I'm always looking for a trending trade, if not a trending trade, uh, some type of retracement momentum trade or reversal momentum trade. Uh, if you're trading ranges, then using moving averages is not the best. I mean, you can use them to identify if there's a range because if the moving averages are flat, there could be a range going on, and in that case, um, you could get a confirmation that there, that there is a range. But other than that, it's not so useful. Why is that? Because if you look at the four-hour chart, moving averages would not give us any guidance about where a range would stop. We would need to use horizontal levels for that to have an idea. Um, moving averages can only say that maybe there is a range going on, 
but otherwise they will not give us much information about how to trade a range. Moving averages do give a lot of information how to trade a potential trend. How can you trade a trend, for instance? You can wait, for instance, for price to be in fully trending mode or trade a retracement. This is when price breaks through the intermediate. There's a good chance that it can go to the long term, like it did here. For instance, it broke below, hooked back, used the resistance down to the, to the long term. When it breaks below all these moving averages, then we have trending trades, right? So when price then moves back to the short term and breaks below the short term again, we have a with the trend breakout scenario where price is below all the moving averages. So that's the difference. This is with the trend breakout, this is a retracement trade between the moving averages. Prior to that, here we had a with the trend breakout too, but to the opposite side. Let's see. Um, let me just answer a quick question here. So, Nicolet, uh, those are EMA bands, consist of a close, high, and low. And then you get these bands of three EMAs. And I use these numbers. So the pound odd, therefore, not interesting to me, as I already said. Let's continue with the dollar yet. We haven't looked at that one yet. I don't think that one would be too interesting either, because not, not from the moving average perspective. Let me use a different template one second. I'll move to a template where I have these three three bands standard on the charts. Basically moving averages, I'm not sure how much you use them, Nikolai, but they're very useful for um, identifying the trend, support and resistance, but uh, only when there's an angle. When the moving averages have an angle, otherwise they're not used as support resistance. If moving averages are flat, like the dollar yen, they are not support resistance. They're actually a gravity. When price tries to move away from them, the moving averages kind of pull them back. Price tries to move away from it, the moving averages pulls them back. Price tries to move away, pulls it back. Moves away, pulls it back. Moves away, pulls it back moves away, pulls it back. So it's more like a gravity if they're flat. If they have an angle, then they definitely use a support of resistance. And that's why I wouldn't be interested, in, from the moving average perspective, I would seriously not be interested in dollar yen. If I'm looking at this four hour chart, uh, the daily is a bit different, obviously, because we can see that all this correction, basically, is price moving back to the intermediate, moving average like it did here, like it did here, like it did here, and like it did here, and all of those areas were bouncing spots. And eventually, the last one was a great breakout trade. Oh, sorry. The last one was a great breakout trade. So that can happen eventually here, but price would need to break above the red moving averages, or let's say we need to break above this trend line. We need to break above this horizontal resistance. If it breaks above it, then we can see price has maybe completed this retracement. For the moment, though, price is in the daily moving averages, and therefore it's not interesting. It's using the intermediate as support, but it can't break above it. It can't break above the moving averages because before it gets sucked back into it. So that's why it's going sideways at the moment. And you can see that very well on the four-hour chart. That's not looking interesting. 
And the hourly, therefore, although it has some movement, is not interesting to me either. The daily is something different. If we break above here, that could be a different story because we do have, all in all, still that upside momentum if we look at the moving averages. But price would have to really break above 103, 103.70, to have that daily breakout on the moving averages. This is your odd daily. And you can see that we looked at this four hour chart already. I just want to add one thing. That if you look at the four hour, as we said, there's a potential for price to go back to 148 and use that as a resistance. That would be a with the trend. If we bounce off 148, that would be a with the trend scenario because we have all the moving averages aligned. The funny thing is that if you look at the daily, price is actually at the moment um, trying to struggle, trying to break through support in a bigger retracement trade. And price is probably going to re uh, fill this gap between the intermediate and the long term moving average. Right? Here, it was trending, price was above the moving averages. Retrace back to intermediate, then use that as support, made it with the trend set up again, retrace down to blue, hooked back to red, use their resistance. Now probably, in my opinion, trying to get back to green. So although it's a with the trend setup on four hour, it's a reversal on the daily, retracement on the daily. Let's take a look at dollar cat. Dollar cat is not too interesting either. It's flat on the four hour. The daily would be interesting if we are able to break below the support level. We could see some downside maybe potentially. But the most interesting I would say is if we break above resistance and these moving averages here. So you can see I want a break of the red or the blue moving averages to have some guidance on which direction this dollar cat can go in the, in the daily perspective. Four hours, not so interesting. Dollar Swiss isn't a downtrend, but it's a very choppy downtrend. Every time price goes below the moving averages, it has struggled to continue. Um, it's very choppy. Price not fluently below the moving averages. There are some parts where it does move down nicely. And previously, the long-term moving average was a resistance spot. So we could be again at resistance right here. It... Um, it does have a lot of momentum to the upside. What do I mean with momentum? Price moved up a lot in a relatively short period of time, right? Therefore, uh, I would be a bit cautious with this uh, dollar Swiss at the moment. Yeah, I would be cautious. New Zealand USD made big up, big down. Moving averages on the four hour, nothing special. Daily is definitely looking bullish. You've got everything aligned here. Therefore, if you look at this daily, this is more like a bouncing spot for more upside. Let's take a look at the hourly. Yep. Let's see. Price would need to break through a bit. What I would be looking for is price to poke above these moving averages on the hourly, make a retracement back probably to them, and then we can see a bouncing spot either from the moving averages again or a break of this uh, horizontal level could be uh, the thing that uh, would indicate the upside continuation on the daily chart. You see the moving averages on the hourly are flat. But on the daily's perspective, we are back to support. So that's why I'm saying we can look for a bounce on the daily chart. The bounce will look like this. Price will try to break above the moving averages, but they won't continue forever. They will make a hook back because the moving averages on the hourly are flat. 
that's something that could be interesting. Uh, Euro yen certainly not interesting. It's all these moving average are flat. Pound yen. That looks better because the moving averages are aligned. All are pointed up. Mm, so this could be a with the transition scenario because we have uh, the moving averages aligned. They're all bullishly aligned. Uh, they are pointed up and we have price above it. So this is a classical trending scenario. The only thing is that uh, we have a slowdown of price. Price is becoming very um, slow movements compared to these big upsides here. That's price action reading. Very useful to understand what's going on with price. And you can see it's kind of like getting squeezed in between these trend lines. That's where trend lines are good. Moving averages are great, but sometimes you wouldn't see certain characteristics of price action. And by using trend lines, you do. And you can see that the, the, the space between uh, these trend lines is getting a bit squeezed. That's a bit of an unpleasant factor here on the Pong Yen. There's not much space for price to move. And that makes it less desirable. So all in all, if I look at these, we've got maybe a couple left, and then we'll make a summary. If you have any questions, let me know. Oof, this looks messy too. Pretty messy market, I would say, at the moment. Pound New Zealand is messy. Euro New Zealand, again, one of the better ones, because it does have at least a trend on the four-hour chart, although not the greatest one, because... Um, uh, there was also quite a lot of um, choppiness here. You can see why. Look at the intermediate move. Uh, sorry, look at the short-term moving average that got dragged into the intermediate one, and now it's just just now being pulled away from it. Not the best trending mode. Um, so if I look at these four-hour charts, there's nothing really that sticks out with grand. Grandness. Uh, Sylvia discussed, I forgot to mention it, sorry about that. Uh, let's see, stopped out at pound Swissy trading stop plus 128 pips. Definitely not bad. <laughs> awesome job. Great stuff. Pound Swissy, this is the pound Swissy. And Sylvia capitalized nicely on this. This is a nice trend because at least there's at least there's a good angle on the, on the short term moving average. There's an angle on the intermediate one. All of them were aligned. So this is a classical example of a trend going on. Although you can see it took long before price actually went into that direction. So the timing is another matter, but um, it, did take, uh, it did take off. So with a four hour, this, you know, with this angle, we can zoom into the hourly. And there are different ways to trade it. One could either wait for price to go back to the short-term moving average, let price hit it, and then close again above it. That would basically mean price retracing, bouncing back above the moving averages for a breakout trade. So let me make a quick summary here of all of them. <clears throat> Let's see, Wei has, hey, good morning, Wei. Ah, good to see you. Let's see, Wei is asking about the euro dollar. I am looking for, if you look at this hourly, we have a very strong short to moving average here. We have already a bearish cross, so with the strong intermediate, this is looking pretty bearish. You can see a lot of momentum on the moving averages and the AO as well. Got back to the zero line. And in this case, if we use a fib to under, you know to have an idea where we could turn, I would say the 38.2 fib, 137.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80, 138.80,
with a stop loss 138.10 would be an interesting setup for today. 137.90 would be even better, obviously, for resistances for some downside today, maybe later today, and if we get a bear flag to see a follow through tomorrow. So with regard to moving averages, that would mean price basically breaking back to it or just above it, and then price dipping below, dipping back below it again, and finding the follow through below the moving averages tomorrow. Something like that. All in all, though, from a four-hour perspective, it's not the grandest either. quite a mix. Actually, price is pretty close to the, uh, it's right at the green moving averages. So we can dip below them a bit because moving averages are more um, more of a, uh, let's say, a, a rough area, a zone, not necessarily a specific one price level. Uh, why the, yeah, that's a good question. I, actually, we can in the meantime. Could take the whole fib. Be pretty spacious. Uh, we have reached the zero line here recently, so it's possible. Until it didn't reach the zero line, I was still more inclined to use this 30 minute fib, or maybe even a 50 minute fib which was basically taking this swing high, swing low from here. So that was the reason why I took the smaller one. But the retracement is taking quite its time. And um, therefore, the hourly has reached the zero line, or it's very close to it. So it does make sense. We can uh, take the bigger one too now. Uh, way saying if the time correction continues, I don't think we won't see much upside retracement. Now, looking at the momentum, it doesn't seem likely indeed. Um, before looking at the AO as well, the oscillator, together with the moving averages, uh, a break of this bottom is a decent probability, I would say. At the 138, we have a 23.6 fib, and eventually a 38.2 at uh, the bigger moving averages as well, indeed. Yeah, it looks like uh, the pound is not retracing up to, what was it, I think 169. We were looking for 169, 169-ish, I think. Doesn't look like we're going to get there. We're indeed continuing with this bearish structure. If you look at the 50-minute chart, uh, that doesn't surprise me. This was already a retracement from below the moving averages all the way to the purple one. That's why I said this is uh, looking like the retracement has been completed. Then price bounced off that, started to break below the moving averages, and broke a little low again. So. Unfortunately, that was maybe a bit too uh, too greedy for me to to try to catch one more move up to the pink one. Sorry, the purple one again. That uh, doesn't seem like it's going to happen. And you can see here we filled the gaps between the short term and the intermediate and the intermediate and long term. Here. That's why I also was saying if we break below this purple, this uh, orange line, we would also be breaking below the, purple, the blue lines here. We could have a reversal trade between blue moving averages and the green moving averages. That's the only thing that's a bit risky right now because we're still close <coughs> to support. 
All in all, your dollar uh, shorting potential is interesting. All in all, odd USD might be a bouncing spot at the moving averages. <clears throat> you might want to keep an eye on the dollar in general, though, on how far this odd USD can go down. Pound dollar is mm, same like the euro dollar was interesting from the resistance here moving averages now I'm moving down though. Let me take a look at this template. <clears throat> sure, it looks like we're breaking uh, below these move averages, below this trend line. I'm not sure if we have pound news anymore. I don't think we did, but um, this is looking like a bearish candle. Retracement, if they close indeed below the moving averages here, retracement of that candle could be a reversal trade down to uh, at least the green one here, the green moving averages, if not a breakout below. It's a retracement trade, though. Actually, the euro pound four hours trending. This is a typical trend. Prices, uh, the spaces between the moving averages is decent. They're not touching each other, at least. You can see the difference here. The moving averages have a separation between them, themselves and um, prices pulling the short term one away from the others. So, with some speed. So, this could actually be a retracement for more downside. Potentially, just like we had here, retracement, downside, retracement, downside, retracement, etc. <clears throat> dollar Swiss and Dollar Cat are not that interesting. They're quite intertwined. The Kiwi would be just like the audio is the interested to the upside. We have everything aligned to the upside. So that would be with the trend scenarios to the upside, especially the USD. But we need price to go back above the green one, which means we preferably want to see price back above here, or even here, above these resistances for that uh, particular potential. Dollar yen is not interesting. Pound yen was not interesting. Euro yen, no, all of it's flat. <clears throat> The euro odd was also something that's interesting here too. Everything is aligned to the downside. And we can wait for price to go back to resistance and wait for it to uh, break below the moving averages. Euro New Zealand 2. And the others I really didn't look at uh, this morning. Euro CAD, I can take a look with you quickly now. Euro CAD, Pound CAD. Uh, Only pound Swissy seems to be somewhat interesting from the moving average perspective at least. So it depends what type of trader you are, Nicolet. If you're with a trend trader, you can use these moving averages um, to, to, to scan various time frames and see if there's a time frame, a pair, currency pair that has them all aligned and space between them, then you know that price is trending. And if price is then back at the moving averages, then you know there's a retracement at the moment. And it could be retracement for more de for more trend continuation. What you can what you can do in that case, let that price go back to the inter to the short term and let it bounce off the short term, and you're back in a trend. If you're more of a reversal trader or you're looking for both, you can too use the charts to scan uh, for um, you know what the price relationship is to the moving averages, and what you're then looking for is price to break 
above or below the moving averages for retracement. In this case, if price when break, price breaks above the short term, there is that trade up to the intermediate. If it breaks above the intermediate, there was that retracement trade up to the long term one. <clears throat> That's how you can use those moving averages basically to make with a trend trades and reversal trades. If the moving averages are flat and they're all intertwined, it's really not that interesting as the other cases. And then that particular time frame plus that in that particular pair is not so interesting. And you can of course look at various time frames to see if there's a time frame that is interesting. We were now looking more at four hour and hourly, but maybe the daily looks different. You know, some of these daily charts look different, or the 50 minute chart looks different. Maybe there's an interesting 50 minute trade uh, in the, on the hourly perspective, you know, 15 minute hourly perspective, the four hour is not that interesting. Doesn't mean that the 50 minute trade would not be interesting. It depends how you use them. Um, people talk about a delay indeed, but mm, I don't really have that, I don't see that so, let me say it this way. To me it's just a, a visual tool of support and resistance plus trend definition. So it's, uh, I don't see that as really a, a, a hindrance to, to trading personally. Um, because I can I can read anything from it that I want to. Um, if moving averages are like this, intertwined, that means price is choppy. Um, so and it's choppy. I don't need to know more. I mean, that's all I need to know. And it's not an interesting time frame, therefore. By using moving averages, if you would only use one moving average on one time frame, there would be that problem with the delay. But if you use multiple time frames and multiple moving averages, you create a perspective of the structure of the pair and you can see where the spaces are and whether it's with the trend or counter trend and what the likelihood is of that space being filled by using the AO. The AO is important to understand if there's divergence. If there's divergence, then the reversal space is more likely to be filled. If there's no divergence, then price continuing with uh, the trend and using the support of the moving averages, if they have a good angle, as support and resistance is, is higher if there's no divergence. For instance, here, right, price was all aligned. Price moved back to the moving averages, bounced off it, used support, continued with the moving averages here for a breakout trade. That would be a great with the trend breakout trade here. The same I'm trying to actually point out is could happen here, basically. Yes, I know Nikolai. I know that I, I'm aware that um, the delay is, is given in the calculations. But I'm all saying is that um, it's not something that hinders my trading how I use the moving averages, it doesn't hinder my trading uh, or the interpretation. I don't consider my interpretation of price action uh, through moving averages as a delay. Although each MA is indeed calculated with the delay, if you know what I mean. And the reason why is because of the method I'm using with regard to moving averages. Uh, the method is by using multiple time frame analysis, the AO, and the angle and multiple moving averages on multiple time frames basically to to get a picture of what's going on. Then the the, the delay that it has is not as important, in my opinion at least. Um, and the reason is that you know if everything is aligned, you have a good uh, good angle like this for instance then uh, and price moves back to it. This is a retracement, right? This part within an uptrend. Price uses a support once price breaks above it. You got a breakout slash trend trade to the upside on this four-hour chart. 
The AO is an awesome oscillator. It's like a MACD shows if there's divergence. You can find it by going to insert indicators. Go to Bill Williams awesome oscillator. So it's a very, uh, you know, neat method of understanding with the trend trades and reversal trades from a multiple time frame analysis perspective. Now, on the shorter time frames, they have a bit of their own. I would say um, it's it's a bit of a different world because uh, more most of the time I would say the short term moving averages are a bit more powerful. I would say uh, here, for instance, if you look at uh, the twenty one thirty four EMA here, you can see that this was already down. Price was making some kind of correction back to it, and it just follows the flow here down lower despite the fact that uh, on the hourly price was maybe still uh, above these moving averages. And that's because we got a uh, bigger correction going on here. So the 15-minute world was already in this downside momentum, and price was on this hourly, if we put back the original template here, was already filling this gap between the red and the blue. But uh, you can see that the blue is, a, is an approximation, of course. Right, because we went through them just a bit here. This is very choppy. This is not so interesting. Here on the audio is the upside. We had interesting trades where price was breaking above the moving averages. We trace back to it and used it as support for a breakout trade again. Here we had bigger retracement trades. Back to blue, back to purple, some messiness, and we just broke out of that messiness, in fact, or yet yeah, last week. Well, folks, we'll be back next uh, next week uh, tomorrow. Um, hopefully, I'll be a bit more scanning today, so uh, maybe I'll have a bit more uh, inspiration for some trades. Today, I don't see many. Maybe the euro is getting euro odd, odd USD, maybe euro dollar, but otherwise I don't see see much. Um, yen is, especially dollar yen, is still in this awkward consolidation. And uh, yeah, not, not looking that interesting. Other than that, the CAD, also not that fantastic. So I don't think that um, those are the best for today. Probably the Euro seems most volatile at the moment. I would say or the Aussie maybe. Pound is still moving down. Probably those two are the best maybe, the uh, Euro and the Aussie. We'll keep an eye on it today. We'll be back tomorrow with a different topic. Let me take a look. Tonight, Talatal has a weekly forex recap. That's usually on Mondays, but it's tonight, in fact. This week, it's tonight. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be back with forex strategy and Thursday, Fibonacci. Same time, same place. So, see you then. If you have any questions, Nikolai, with these, these moving averages, uh, let me know if you want to know these numbers. It's a very useful uh, method that, um, that, uh, that basically banking uh, traders use. So, it, uh, it's definitely worth uh, learning. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's very Kind of like it's it's a relatively easy setup. It's a very visual setup. It's a very intuitive trade uh, technique, and um, 
it's yeah, it's easy to understand when to trade, when not to trade, when there's a trend, what kind of situation or structure is going on multiple time frames in a relatively fast uh, scenario. If you add the AO uh, trend line and a fib like I do, then and a Camarilla MACD or the 50 minute chart to gain understanding of the lower time frames, then um, that should be enough to, to get an all round picture of what's going on. So I, I think that the moving averages are always on my charts despite no matter what the topic is of the day. But um, I think if you add those couple of things to it, then uh, you have a, like horizontal levels for instance, then that should be more enough to comprehend the structure and, and to understand where the best levels are and the best spaces are, sorry, for trading. But we'll have another moving average uh, webinar uh, soon. I'm sure we always have usually two a month. So um, try it and let me know if you have any questions uh, the next time or any webinar, in fact, we can always take a look at the moving averages because it's always at least a fixed part of our uh, setup of the day. The only thing is that it depends on the topic of the day, which, which gets a bit more attention. Okay, but otherwise, moving averages are always uh, on, the, on, the, on the charts and always part of the discussion, just depends how much. Well, folks, see you tomorrow, hopefully, and um, let's see how today goes. Yesterday was very slow, but today seems to be a bit faster. Pound is falling. Euro is not moving too much. I would still like the Euro to go a bit higher, but I'm not sure. We'll have to see if we can get up to 80. 80 or 90, still about 30 pips away. All right, folks, see you soon. Cheers.